Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Extraordinary called B-Sides, where I hand over the controls to my friend, the actor Ed Stoppard, who will be speaking today to the writer and actress Catherine Jakeways about her hidden passion. If you're new to this podcast series, welcome. Ordinarily, I interview ordinary people with extraordinary outlooks on life, ranging from my family to friends and the special people I've come across in life who have made an impact on me. At the heart of all our conversations is the question, how shall we live? But for now, let's go to B-Sides and my friend, Ed. Ed, myself and Catherine were at drama school over 22 years ago. Catherine Jakeways is one of our finest writers, having blown us all away with her Radio 4 series, North by Northamptonshire, and where this service will terminate. Catherine now finds herself increasingly writing for TV and film, where I have a feeling she will shine. B-Sides with Ed Stoppard and Catherine's Hidden Passion. Welcome to B-Sides. This is a podcast where myself and Marcus Marcoux chat with a guest about their hidden passion, uh, whose siren call constantly threatens to draw them away from their day job and give meaning and structure to their lives. Uh, Our guest today is the quite wonderful, brilliantly talented writer, actress, and comedienne, Catherine Jakeways. (laughs) Catherine, welcome to B-Sides. Hello. We should say that we've known each other a long time, haven't we? I still have fond memories of our production of Thomas Middleton's The Witch. Um, (laughs) I can't believe I couldn't remember who wrote it. I had to Google it. I couldn't remember. Yeah, in a church hall in Kensington, December 1998. That was, I mean, I'm going to say the worst production of anything that's ever been on, whether in a church hall in Kensington or ever anywhere, wasn't it? Or anywhere. The worst and the best, surely. The best and the best, yeah. It was the worst and the best by far. it It wasn't the best of plays and the worst of plays. It was just the worst of plays. Can I say, though, as a result of that production, I would say 50% of my dinner party conversation is directly linked to that production, including including when I brought Catherine's dead husband on stage about three pages too soon. The best... <laughs> How much money, genuinely, do you think you would pay now to see a video of that production? Not as much as I'd pay to destroy that video. It has said that 22 years later we'd be under our respective duvets during a global pandemic. Look, we've got to crack on because one of the USPs of this podcast is brevity. Yes, Catherine. B-sides. Now, I made it quite clear. The the rule of B-sides is that you bring in a pastime, the passion, the kind of alter ego. And you said, can I have three? Now, I shall be interested to know, as time goes on with your podcast, whether most people are able to just pluck immediately a passion from their pocket and be able to say, this is the thing that I love doing and this is my hobby. Would you? Do you have one? Well, as it happens, our pilot episode was Marcus interviewing me about what he deemed to be my B-side. He never actually asked me the question because had you actually asked me the question, I probably would have, after a sort of few moments hesitation, trying to kind of dream up something more exciting, I would have said, uh, well, I guess it's archery. So listen, Catherine, I, listen, because it's you and I love you dearly, I've given you a pass and I've allowed you to, as it were, print your own double album. Okay. You've got a B side, a C side and a D side. I think the truth is that my first thing that I'm going to offer up is really the main one. So Catherine, would you please now reveal your B side? I'm going to say wild water swimming. Oh my God, I love it. Now Uh, I'm saying that with the full knowledge that it makes me sound uh, a bit... Oh, it's a little bit naughty. <laughs> I wouldn't say that at all. I'm going to kind of run with this notion of me not knowing what guest B-sides are. So I had no idea what you were going to say. Did you, what did you say, wild water swimming? Well, I'm calling it that, which really makes it sound much more energetic. What I should say is that I live in North London. I live quite near Hampstead Heath. And I'm aware as I'm saying this that I'm slightly self-conscious about discussing it because it makes me sound a bit of a... North London writer cliche, but I have recently discovered, I think in the last couple of years I've been doing it, and I recently discovered an absolute love of swimming in the ponds on Hampstead Heath. And I do it 
uh, well, in the summer, I do it every day if I can. And this year was the first year that I did it all through the winter. Not every day all through the winter, but I did go to the ladies pond on the heath at least once a week over the winter. And yeah, so obviously that's been halted by a global pandemic. So I haven't actually been for a couple of months and I've really missed it. But it's been the thing that has easily been my sort of salvation of the last year and well a couple of years actually because in the summer it's like I say it's it's even more of a joy but the actual coldness of it in the winter is extraordinary pleasure actually have you ever done it uh, in the summer or in the winter have you ever well the... I think actually a hallmark of a b-side is that when you're deprived of it you really miss it so Catherine yeah, that's interesting. I think that completely um, fulfills the criteria of a b-side and yes I have done it my wife, Amy, who you know very well, do. Uh, she's kind of, you know, she, she can almost not pass a body of open water without jumping in it. I think it's a little bit, and this is maybe why I'm also slightly self-conscious that it may be a cliche. I think it is something that comes slightly with women of a certain age. I don't know why. And I say that partly because when I go to the ponds over here, particularly over the winter, mm. uh, that's yeah. mainly who's there. I mean, I'm often one of the youngest there, actually. And there are some absolutely amazing women in their sort of 80s or possibly even older, I suspect, but certainly loads in their 60s and 70s who go every day and have clearly been going for decades. But I think it, it is something that comes with age a little bit. In the summer, when I go to the mixed ponds in the summer, then often that's full of sort of teenagers sort of flouncing around in bikinis and flirting with each other, which there's also some, you know, interest to be to be had yeah, sorry, from observing that, that. just remind me the address of Hampstead Ponds again where is it again <laughs> but the ladies pond is very much a different kettle of fish because it's as the name suggests is ladies only and that's the one that is open all year round as is the men's pond but I've obviously not been there and you go you go and it's an absolute oasis it's beautiful beautiful sort of setting and it's completely closed off so you can't I mean you you could if you were really trying quite hard have a look in from the heath but you know you're not supposed to and really you feel like you're quite private and people do walk around quite a lot in the in the nude ed uh there is uh, a lot of ladies parts on display but it there's nothing I mean there's really nothing sexual about it and there's not and I don't actually I nor would I I'd be horrified at the idea of it but actually I feel a bit of a prude because the women who do walk around completely stark as you just think well good on you and they get in the water and you swim around you're not you know in the winter you're not in the water for more than 10 or 15 minutes but it absolutely changes your entire day so it's uh, I lo oh, I'm glad to hear that Amy does it. Where does she does she do it in the sea or does she do it in the? I mean, well, not near she, well, I mean, <clears throat> if we go if we go to the coast, she will get. Yeah. We swim in rivers and we swim in lakes. We've swum in lakes in the Alps. We swum in rivers in the West Country. Oh. And Amy goes. She likes to go to Brockwell Lido. Yes, um, I've not been to Brockwell actually, but the Parliament Hill one I go to quite a lot as well. Right. And the the yeah. dopamine hit, the euphoria. I completely get. And is, is that must be one of the attractions for you, I'm guessing. Absolutely. Yeah, hugely. And and with a job like writing where you're spending an awful lot of the day, not only on your own, but sort of indoors, particularly over the winter, staring at a computer and sort of concentrating to have, even if it is only sort of six or seven minutes of the day where you're um, immersing yourself in freezing cold water does absolutely give you that rush that will last, you know, until the next time you do it. And it makes the whole day. Well, actually, I often think if, if I've done that in the morning, because I try and do it, um, I don't go first thing because I have to take the kids to school, but I would go straight after that. So it'd be my first thing after dropping the kids at school. If I've done that, if I've achieved that with a day, then I feel like it doesn't necessarily matter what else I do because it's, uh, you know, how ever badly my work's going or however badly the rest of my life's going. <laughs> if I can think that I did that and had that moment of feeling that euphoria at the beginning of the day, then it, it sort of makes up for anything else that comes afterwards. I can, so I can't kind of, believe that. Marcus, jump in. I know you're itching. Come on. Can I ask how you got started with pond swimming? What was the thing that took you to Hampstead Heath? Well, I'd always wanted to come uh, and swim in the ponds here. It's You know, you sort of hear about it when you're in your 20s. It's the kind of thing that if you don't live nearby, you just sort of can't ever be asked to quite motivate yourself. 
But I moved over here a couple of years ago and went like I would imagine most people do in the summer when it was a really hot day. And it felt like it was just that sort of having a swim to cool yourself down and absolutely loved it. And I went, Nick and I go, Nick, my husband too, you both know very well, go the mixed ponds is only open in the summer months. So it's May till October, I think. So Nick and I go most days together in the summer and he is less keen on doing the sort of winter thing. So the the going over the winter to the ladies pond has been something that I've done on my own, which actually much so I love going with Nick and actually I go with the kids. Have uh, Last summer was the first summer that the kids did it and I used to enjoy going with them as well in the summer. But actually there's something quite lovely about the, the sort of um, solitary nature of going on your own as well in a sort of meditative way. Mm. This is interesting. Sorry to interject, but, oh. but when we Ed and I did our sort of sort of pilot podcast and we landed on archery yeah the two things we talked about were nature and meditation oh okay and and to be swimming out in the wild must be part of the thrill of pond swimming i want to just um get this on record i suspect that out of b-sides the podcast that is b-sides yeah i think there might come a groundbreaking scientific paper because i think we are going to find some very interesting causalities and you know connections between people's b-sides and a kind of atavistic need to to get away from our modern 21st century societal roles i love that suggestion and but and i think you're right but it may also be just that you and i ed as the first two guinea pigs of this podcast are just saying more obvious like, <laughs> suggestions slightly affected slightly affected choices i don't well, think we can ever be described as affected to be honest it's a responsibility having to own up to something that you consider to be a passion i find i you know I, I don't think i have the luxury of having very many passions and i suppose that's the other thing is that when you're our age and you have a family and a busy job and a job that takes you away from your family quite a lot you don't really feel like you can say oh I'm just going to go off I mean I suppose if people are you know running marathons or if they're as I know Marcus is a big football fan then there are going to be big periods of your weekend when you're away from your home although actually Marcus you do it with your family don't you so it's not the same for you it's, it's actually a family activity rather than uh than me sort of going off so so that's not the same but I suppose that for a lot of people football might be that mightn't it and as a sort of an excuse to get away from your family which i suppose you can't justify for any huge lengths of time when you're when you've got no that's right but what you've done is you found something that grounds you and that's meditative and it's and it's and to be honest ed and i have known you for how long 20 plus years yeah and we didn't we just didn't know that about you yeah well it's interesting isn't it and it wouldn't be something necessarily that i would advertise i suppose because i feel a bit um self-conscious about it because it's a I don't know it feels like it's such a luxury and such a, and I, I suppose I'm if I'm honest I, I'm conscious that it sort of points to the fact that I live in a part of London where that's possible <laughs> and I feel very lucky to you know be able to do that but that if actually if I lived by the sea that would be even better I mean if I could swim in the sea every day that would be in, that's a whole other level of um wild water yeah. isn't it yeah um or a river would, have you ever swum in a river um not recently I, I mean i think i have it's a whole other thing isn't it oh, and, that's and, amazing but that's the, the same thing with the ponds and like you were saying marcus that one of the joys of it obviously is the fact that it's very cold and you can get that in a lido and a, lido swimming is is great as well and the one near here you they have a um, sauna that they put up in the winter as well so you can go and get freezing and then go and get hot again which obviously is one thing and that so you get advantage of that in the pond but really the main thing is the fact that you are literally swimming around and a duck will come and land and swim along next to you for a bit and there's there's a heron that comes to the mixed ponds and you see it all the time and there's ducklings and you know as the seasons change the leaves change and the, obviously the weather changes and the the sort of texture of the water almost and the sort of experience in all all your senses is different as the year goes on so it is a different thing from swimming in the swimming pool and even if it is outdoor because it's much more about connecting with nature and it does i don't know i'm, I'm feeling slightly um self-conscious about even saying this out loud because it sounds so right i think it's I, i'm absolutely sold on it i mean i'm you'd love so it, I, think. I think you'd sold. absolutely love it i mean i can't well, recommend well, it enough i know that steve and delane does the swimming in the sea because when we were at dean he invited me 
to go swimming in the sea in Dinard in like and Ed. Ed didn't turn up. Do you remember Ed? No, I and... him went in, Marcus. I went oh, you in. Did turn up. I went in oh, because I was I felt no, I went in because I didn't want to be shown oh, up did. in front of Delane. What I take it back. I thought Delane would never Dinard. speak to me again if I didn't go. I didn't want to go in. Let me explain what Dean Dinard's just a, a place in France where they hold a film festival where we went with the film. Yeah, but hang oh. on, Marcus, sorry, just two secs. It's not on the Riviera. Right, it's not just a <laughs> to play. It's in Normandy. It it's the north. It was thing. free. It was February or something. He did it. I did it. I went in my boxer shorts. We were like, "What are we doing?" Oh. <laughs> editors interjection. Editors interjection. The Dinard Film Festival normally takes place in the first week of October on the Brittany coast not far from St Marlowe and the sea is very cold it is unique among film festivals in that it exclusively screens British films and for the past 30 years has been a gateway for the UK film industry into Europe notably the Full Monty started its journey there Alfred Hitchcock famously holidayed there and the house that allegedly inspired the house the house in Psycho can be seen from one of the picturesque bays that grace the gorgeous rolling coastline it is a gem of a festival possibly one of the best in my opinion so relaxed and so much fun by a stunning coastline if you are a film lover get yourself there for a week of film and seaside bliss we took papadopoulos and sons there back in 2012 and my short film two strangers who meet five times won the audience award there a couple of years ago at dinard special memories it is a special place i dream of returning to always did you then make stephen delane do archery with you as a you know what i'd be frightened to do it because he'd get that look in his eye he'd get that look in his eye and i'd and this voice in my head would be saying Take the bow from him. Take the bow from him. Um, listen, I'm just, I'm slightly aware because, as I said, brevity is one of the USPs of this podcast. Yes. I love the wild. Honestly, I'm overjoyed that that is your B-side. And it's a oh, flipping brilliant B-side. And I'm, I'm over the moon that that's how we're kicking off. And I, can, and I must apologize. And this may become a theme that people yeah. realize that actually they feel quite uncomfortable talking about the B-sides because it's sort of quite revealing. I felt quite uncomfortable talking about archery because I felt like a bit of a dick. Same time, a bit of a kind of psychopath. Um, you don't want to be one of those people who's going, oh, listen to this great thing that I do. and you should. Ed, do Ed can you just say I felt like a bit of a dick again because we didn't get that clearly? Oh, for goodness sakes. I felt like a bit of a dick and a psychopath, if I'm being perfectly honest. But so listen, but um, Catherine. Yes. Could you, Can I then give you my other two could you suggestions? Tell us your, the seaside of your double album. My seaside. Stop, stop, stop. Stop the clock. Producer's note. Producer's note. I, I think we should bring Catherine back like halfway through next year to get the C and D sides later because uh, I think there's so much in the pond. That's right. He could be um, right. You're, you're absolutely right because I'm anticipating a reluctance amongst the guests that I invite on. And I think that we may desperately need to fill some episode time, maybe, maybe sooner than you or I would, would care to admit. Is there anything else that you want to explore with the pond swimming? Well, because I did want to actually just maybe just look a little closer, ask a bit about the demographic at the ladies' pond. Okay. Because... Okay. I mean, I don't want to have a dig at the younger generation. You know, is it the earlier generations, they were just made of hardier stuff? I can't imagine that I would have done it over the winter in my 20s or probably even my 30s. I would love to think that I would have gone, um, and I, you know, I've always liked swimming and I've always liked swimming in the sea in the summer in my 20s to cool down, to walk about a bit in a swim, swimming costume when that's... Uh, something that you're interested in other people seeing, which certainly isn't anymore. But also, you've got other stuff going on in your 20s, haven't you? You're lying in bed a lot. You're going out. You're hungover. Although, actually, wild water swimming when you're hungover is one of the best things you can do, I've discovered recently. But in your 40s and above, and I guess this must be the case more and more, and as I say, from the demographic that I see at the ladies' pond, I think 
older women in particular find this, you have a bit more time, you have a bit more appreciation of getting 20 minutes to yourself to swim around and and you obviously go to that saying you don't have your phone on you, you don't have anybody talking to you. People do occasionally go in pairs, but they don't really swim around and chat like you would see. They not. Uh, in summer not really oh. not really no it's quite a it's quite a solitary thing you are swimming around almost entirely on your own often bar the odd bird who might come and share the water with you so it is absolutely a chance to think about stuff work stuff through I mean actually I quite often if I've been writing something that I've been finding tricky think well, I'm gonna have a bit of a think about that later in the pond and you might have a swim around. I mean I would only do two laps probably in the in the winter because it is so cold but so there's very not really very much time to work out a, a knotty problem but you do get a chance to be on your own for a bit and I think that's a big advantage and my god you know particularly at the moment when we're all absolutely sick to death of our families however much we love them uh the idea of having 10 or 15 minutes to yourself to mm. swim around in some water is just heaven isn't it yeah so I, I think I the listen. demographic yeah. reflects that because women and i'm sure this is true in the men's pond as well but i can only speak about the ladies pond the the women you chat they chat in the shower there's a lot more chatting in the shower that goes on and in the changing rooms and that becomes quite social and i'd be interested to know whether that's true in the men's pond maybe it is but in the ladies pond there's quite a lot of chatting afterwards but the but the 10 minutes or whatever it ends up being that you're in the water is pretty much just for yourself yeah because i, I mean and, 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 and as a meditation should be and it's it's a f- kind of form it's a sort of form of meditation isn't it by the sounds of it it is it, absolutely and i think in the summer i've been with friends and you treat it as a social activity and you can have a chat but i absolutely not be interested in somebody saying oh I, i'd like to come regularly with you to come swimming with you in the winter because i that would sort of negate the point of it because i don't i don't really want it to be about chatting i'd much rather have that as a thing that i do for myself which again uh, yeah is something that at our age you don't get much of a luxury for that do you you don't i mean i you know i have very occasionally done running not at any level at all and i'm so bad at it and i but i I guess you get the same kind of thing from that that again the last thing i would want would be to go out running with somebody else because it's you know it's about being able to be on your own isn't it and you know you get the same you get the same joy from being able to go and sit on the toilet on your own for 10 minutes if that ever happens is that your seaside is is your seaside just spending long time no you have to wait for my seaside i've just realized actually that retiring to the toilet for extended periods of time that actually is my b-side maybe that's actually i should i should sort of make that distinction to every guest i should say look i understand it's a given that your b-side is is going to the toilet locking the door and not appearing for half an hour that's that's safe that's safe yeah Right. But also like the the Bible and the complete works of Shakespeare exactly. and Desert Island. I'm going to give you it's, it's the Bible and the complete works of Shakespeare. I'm going to give you that. It's a solitary poo for your B side. Ah, oh but my god! What is next best is what you're ah, asking. I just love you. Oh my god! Maybe so. Maybe people should have a luxury as well for their for their B side. Um, yeah. All right. Look, I think, um, <laughs> sorry, I think that's a really good place to wrap up. Catherine, thank you so much for coming on our debut B-Sides. It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy and I miss you so much and I can't wait to meet up. I know, I'm um, very flattered to be asked. Thank you so much. And I, I, it's just a joy to talk to you under any circumstances, but particularly under a duvet in a pandemic. And thank you for, for letting me remember the pleasure of swimming in a pond, if only uh, in a theoretical way, just briefly. And uh, for letting me talk about it a bit Catherine, and actually thank you. Go on. can I also say that I'm getting over my embarrassment and self-consciousness about talking about it because to start with it feels a little bit like reading out something from your diary to tell people not I don't know why it's not like it's you know there's plenty of things I could have said that'd be much more embarrassing and probably next time I will but it's um actually I think it's a good lesson to embrace the fact that this is stuff that we like doing and and talking about yourself doesn't need to be quite as um, gut-wrenching <laughs> as you sometimes think it's going to be. So thank you. Catherine, you're welcome. And I'm so glad we could have been of some service. And that was Ed Stoppard speaking to the gorgeously intelligent Catherine Jakeways about her B-side. Next week for Extraordinary, we return to people I know or who I've met who have extraordinary outlooks on life 
I'll be speaking to Greg Thompson, a Team GB athlete, one of our great hopes for Discus, and someone who I've been mentoring for nearly a decade. We talk about our relationship, race and racism, Discus, and the art of letting go, literally and figuratively. If you're new to Extraordinary, you can find us on Spotify. Ed Stoppard will be back with a B-Sides in a couple of weeks' time. Until then, goodbye.